friends. So um, I just started peeling some taro. Um, I was going to purchase the large taro, but it's just really for hubby and I. The kids don't eat poi. Um, hubby and I do. This time I'm only going to make um, poi to put into my um, poi mochi, uh, deep fried poi mochi. So I just bought these little small ones. Um, I've never used the little small ones before, but I'm sure it'll turn out just fine. I usually use the large ones uh, when I make poi. So I've got about, I don't know, maybe a pound and a half of uh, small taro um, roots that I purchased from my um, Asian market called um, H Mart. That's just a few minutes away from me. And so um, when you get them, you get them like this, they're really dirty. There's no need to wash them because um, when you purchase the small ones like this, I just like to peel it first. And then um, the small ones doesn't get as sticky as the large ones. So let me go ahead and show you that. Don't mind the noise in the background. That's just a dishwasher running. So you see, it's very easy to peel. Um, there's no stickiness to it when it's the small ones, like I mentioned. So I just peel them right up. And then before I put them into the pot of um, water, um, I just like to make sure that they're really rin uh, rinse well, getting rid of all these um, dirt around them and taking out the, these brown patches before I start boiling them up. All right, here is the clean and peeled uh, taro um, into my small pot. I'm just going to go ahead and boil this until it's uh, nice and soft. Um, you, can, um, you can tell that it's, um, it's ready when you kind of get like a, um, a knife and then um, push it through and then it breaks apart. So that's when you know it's, um, it's cooked and then you just drain out the water and then you just let it sit so, um, to make poi. Um, and then once I make the poi, um, I'm still debating whether to make mochi out of it or to make um, kololo. So that's still up in the air, but for now I'm just gonna go ahead and boil this until it's soft and tender. All right, don't mind the noise. I am frying up um, some shrimp lumpia. And so I boiled the taro and then I've also pulled it. Um, and then now I'm going to go ahead and put it into my uh, food processor and just uh, really grind it really um, well and, and creamy. And just add a little bit of cold water. So I'm going to put a little bit of ice water in here. Just basically put probably two to four um maybe i don't know maybe about five tablespoons of water um just make sure that it's not too much water once once i cool off the taro i put it into a food processor and then i get um ice water and then just add about a tablespoon at a time you don't want to put too much water because then it becomes um sour um with uh, with the poi Um, and then I added another tablespoon of cold water, but already it's becoming to be really creamy. I would like to use the food processor rather than um, than like um, grating it or the blender because it makes it really um, smooth and creamy. Now when a poi is done by the finger method. So if it takes one finger to scoop it up and it stays on, then it's it's done. So you can either do a one finger, two finger, or three finger. So three fingers is is very um, very wet. It, it's it falls off your finger. That's why you're, you're needing the three. I can never do the three finger. Sometimes I can do the two, but one finger is the best because you see how this is sticking on. You just dip it, and then it just takes one finger to basically take a taste, and that's when you know you got good poi making skills. All right, so. I like how it is now. It's nice and creamy. And I'm just going to add to me for my flavor because I'm making um, um, deep fried. I don't know if I'm making kololo. Maybe maybe I'll have it. I think I've got enough in here to, um, to make um, kololo and fried mochi. So with the fried mochi version, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of um, color in here. All right, friends. So here is my poi. I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, one finger method, then you know it's a good poi. Mm. I also made some for, um, shrimp lumpia. I'm going to let this sit 
for a while and then refrigerate it. Then think about whether I'm gonna use this poi for either kololo or uh, fried um, poi mochi. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this very simple video of how to make easy poi with the available taro variety that you can um, purchase from your local um, Asian market, farmer's market, wherever you're located that you're able to get some taro roots and then make it at home conveniently without having to go through the traditional way of making poi, which is having a wooden, like a hollow wooden bowl and um, being able to um, pound on it um, and adding a little water at a time. I only added about maybe three tablespoons of um, cold water into the, um, the small taros that I had bought and it turned out really great. Mahalo!